Good afternoon and welcome to Camp Cove Park on the Concordia University campus here in Mequon, Wisconsin. It's a doubleheader of Division Three college baseball as the Concordia University Wisconsin Falcons welcome in the Maranatha Baptist Bible College Crusaders. And a very pleasant good afternoon alongside Kevin Winter. Matt Mendel on hand here on the Concordia Sports Network. The Falcons back in action for the first time since sweeping MSOE on Sunday, doing so by the final scores of 5-4 to four and 9-3. to three. The Falcons have five victories and 12 defeats overall, sit at 5-3 and three in conference play. That's tied for fourth with Benedictine, 3-1 and one in actual home games, although 5-3 and three in games played here at Capco Park as the last eight have for the Falcons, a couple of which, though, the Falcons on the scoreboard listed as the away team. And for the Maranatha Baptist Bible College Crusaders, they're back at Capco Park for a second straight day after they played their doubleheader against Marion here from this neutral site. In game one, Maranatha lost to Marion by the final score of 25-9 to in seven innings before losing game two, 25 to nothing in seven innings. The Crusaders are 2-9. and nine. They've been shut out five times. They sit 0-6, and six, that in conference play, and they sit 2-7 and seven in two road games, looking to snap a nine-game losing streak, although they've lost 94 consecutive conference games with their last Northern Athletics Conference win coming back on May 3, 2008, when they knocked off Wisconsin Lutheran 8-6. That brings us to game one of this doubleheader and checking out the batting order for the Crusaders. They come in collectively. Their batting average has uh, dipped down to about 199. Leading things off at second base is Galen Belinsky with Garrett Ordway, the pitcher slash DH, batting second. And Tim Shelp, he's one of the veterans. He's in center field batting third. Caleb Roast in right field bats cleanup with Timothy Rogers. The shortstop batting fifth. Andy Timblin at third base batting sixth with Ethan Hokinson, the catcher, batting seventh. Derek Funkhauser is at first base, batting eighth. And Jacob Bauer in left field, bats ninth. Once again, for the Crusaders under their head coach, Gary Garrison, who's been the head man since 2009, it's Balinski, Ordway, and Shelp, Roast, Rogers, and Timbaland, Hokinson, Funkhauser, and Bauer. As for the Concordia University, Wisconsin Falcons have won five of their last seven after beginning the year 0-10. and ten. Leading things off, playing first base, Daniel Miller with Brandon Seifert at third base, batting second, and Bo Berger is catching, batting third. Joel Sharon in left field, he bats clean up with Nick Yenter, the DH batting fifth. He is batting in place of left-handed starting pitcher Michael Winter. Batting sixth in right field, Luke Shoreline. He had the long ball against MSOE in a Big win in game one, had a three-run shot that went over the right field fence in the bottom of the eighth inning. Brock Bateman, the shortstop, bat seventh. Jay Kaczynski in center field, batting eighth. And Taylor Book at second base, bat ninth. Once again, for the Falcons, under longtime head coach, Dr. Val Kuyper, Miller, Seifert, and Berger, Sharon, Yenter, Shoreline, Bateman, Kaczynski, and Book. The Falcons right now collectively batting 268 and again, they're coming off a double header performance in which they would register a total of 14 runs off a combined 18 hits. As we speak, the Falcons and their home white unis taking two of the field. Maranatha in their away all gray unis. And defensively for the Falcons, Joel Sharon, Jay Kaczynski, and Luke Shoreline from left to right field. Brandon Seifert, Brock Bateman, Taylor Book, and Daniel Miller from third to first. And Bo Bergert is catching the starting left hander, Michael Winter. We'll step aside when we come back. It's time to throw the first pitch. The Falcons and the Crusaders, game one of this baseball doubleheader on the Concordia Sports Network.
As our national anthem wraps up, we welcome you back to Capco Park for game one of this afternoon's doubleheader between the Falcons and the Maranatha Baptist Bible College Crusaders. As mentioned, on the hill for the Falcons, Michael Winter, the left-hander, getting the nod. And so far on the young 2013 campaign, you know, Winter getting the opportunity, and this is his first start, but yet he has made now four appearances. It's been number four. No record of 5.06 ERA and five and a third inch pitch. Having allowed five runs, three earned on six hits. He has struck out five. He has walked three. And the opposition is batting right around 261 against. So he will get the opportunity here at 6-1, a sophomore out of Cedarburg High School. And for Michael Winter, his battery mate is Bo Berger. And for the umpires here in game number one, behind home plate, Chuck Rungi with Steve Liddell around the bases. The Falcons are a perfect 21-0 against Maranatha going back to 2000. Yet as conference foes in the Northern Athletics Conference, the Falcons have been perfect in that time as well. Although last year, a couple of close calls between these two teams in Watertown. So we'll see what today has in store. But again, the Falcons 12-0 against Maranatha as members of the NAC, which formed back in 2007 for baseball anyways. I mentioned last year, the two teams meeting in Watertown on the 14th of April. The Falcons won the first game 4-0 before Maranatha. Again, battle early with the Falcons in game two, but the Falcons able to win that one by a 14-1 score. Leading things off for the Crusaders is Galen Belinsky. And the first pitch of the ball game has fouled that off the bricks just next door to the Falcon first base dugout. 11.58 at the time of the first pitch. A couple minutes early, temperatures in the high 30s, 37 to be exact. Next pitch sent back off the netting in the backstop. A foul ball runs the count, nothing in two. When at times playing a factor, blowing from left to right, although right now, looking at Old Glory, it's gone a little bit limp. As the pitch missing on the outside, runs the count now to a ball and two strikes. Balinski in that right batter's box for Maranatha. He looks at strike three and is punched out on the one-two offering. So Michael Winter, a nice array of off-speed fastballs. And that time, Belinsky having a tough time keeping up as he goes down looking on a pitch that nicked the lower outside corner for the first out here in the very first inning. We'll see how things go today, making his first start since his junior year in high school. First pitch off the bat at Ordway, end of the bat over to second base. Taylor Book fields and fires for the 4-3 ground out, and Ordway is retired on the very first pitch he sees. Quickly two up and two down to the 4-3 retiree of the Marianne pitcher. Good start for Winter. Confidence is going to be an issue here today. If things go well, things will go well for the remainder of the day. So far, so good, anyways, for the left-hander. First pitch he throws, missed on the outside. Uh, Tim Shelp, the right-handed center fielder. Yeah, Winter last year had 10 appearances in the mound, a 4.82 ERA and 9 in the third innings pitched. Ball sent out to play over the stands on the first base side of the count. Even at a ball and a strike. A transfer from Marion once upon a time, but before that is mentioned in his last start at the Cedarburg Bulldog, in which he had an ERA of 4.20 with the Dogs. Swinging a miss on a pitch that nicked the lower outside corner. Got Shelp to chase, and the count goes to 1 and 2. Two down just underway here in the top of the first. And a fly ball to right, moving to his left, and making the waist tie trap catch is Luke Shoreline. Caught it with the glove, used the bare hand to trap it for out number three as the Crusaders go one, two, three. Again, had the breaking ball and Shelp to right field, but Shoreline puts it away, and Maranatha goes quietly. To the bottom of the first we go. It's Maranatha nothing with the Falcons coming up.
To the bottom of the first, Maranatha on their away. Gray Unis taking to the field with Jacob Bauer, Tim Shelp, and Caleb Roast. From left to right field, it's Andy Timlin, Timothy Rogers, Galen Bolinski, and Derek Funkhauser from third to first. Ethan Hokinson is the battery mate to Garrett Ordway, the starting right-handed pitcher. Ordway, 5'855 pounds, a senior out of Pensacola, Florida. Getting the opportunity for the Crusaders in game number one. He is 0 and 2 with a 14.54 ERA. This being his fourth appearance, third start, has a couple of complete games. 13 inch pitch, have allowed 31 runs, 21 earned on 35 hits. He has struck out 80, has walked 7 in the opposition, is batting 449 against. That was one of the big question marks, and still is one of the big questions involving Maranatha baseball, is pitching depth or lack thereof. And in some instances, and saw it yesterday, okay, they gave up 25 runs per ball game against Marion, while the bullpen isn't all that deep, not to mention you have another game today, and so in both instances, the team only went to the bullpen once per game. So two pitchers per ball game, and losing by a combined 50-9 to nine score. And so in some cases, some of these pitchers instead of be out there and and take it and find a way to battle back. Then again, you know, you, you go through some of these tough spells. We're only going to make you stronger and better as the, the year goes on and as your career moves forward. As you continue to work hard and strive to do better. For the Falcons, leading things off in the right batter's box, the first baseman, Daniel Miller. He comes in with a team-best 361 batting average. And the first pitch from Ordway missed low and away for a ball. And surprisingly, when you start looking at numbers, walks have not been a big issue with Maranatha. It's been the amount of errors they, they commit, 13 in that doubleheader yesterday combined. Walks and hit batters, again, not alarmingly hot on the outside and catching the eye of Miller for a strike and the count even up at 1-1. One and one. Now, overall, though, errors are not extremely high against Maranatha. You go back to the last year, for instance, and the team committed 80 errors. That's seventh most in the conference. So there's still five other teams that committed more during the course of the season, despite the fact Maranatha did not win a game last year. One ball, one strike. And Miller up the middle. That's going to find the outfield. So a leadoff single for Daniel Miller on a 1-1 pitch. That's the way the Falcon offense gets going. Overall, just consistent pitching, but then teams, just their ability to, to manufacture runs, but also start to put together a parade of hits. That is all fact in the team's wall. Is that for Maranatha over the last number of years? At least in conference play. They had great success away from conference. Brandon Seifert taking a ball low and away. This being a program, Maranatha, that's double affiliated, besides being NCAA. Division Three, also part of the National Christian College Athletic Association in Division Two. The 1-0, thrown behind Brandon Seifer, but got a piece of the the jersey after he tried to move forward to get out of the way. Deflected just below the number 25 on the back side of his white jersey, and so the Falcons have ordered first and second with nobody out for Bo Berger. Ordway in a jam to start things off here in the bottom of the first. Marinath, the defense, will back off, at least in the middle of the infield, the first pitch taken low and away for a ball. Now, yesterday in that doubleheader, though, against Marion, Marion had a 15-run second inning to take complete control in game one before game two would see just runs throughout the course of the game, including a nine-run fourth. That was their big inning. Next offering a strike in the count, even up at one and one on the Falcon catcher in the right batter's box. He's batting 262 at 11 of 42. Looking at it with five RBI total. One ball and a strike. Ordway delivers. That misses way down low for ball two. He had his eye over on Daniel Miller at second base before delivering that pitch. But he missed down low, and again, Ethan Hokinson was able to bring it in. 
handling the catching responsibilities. The 2 1. Miss Lowell and away, and the count now three balls and a strike. Yeah, last year for Maranatha, and they've had a mix and match some players around, but Andy Timblin has put the number of games that behind the plate. And again, Holkinson handling those responsibilities for a team that has nine new faces this year. Ball low and away, and that's a free pass to first. So Daniel Miller leads off with a single. Seinfeld hit by a pitch. Now Bo Bergert draws the walk. So the base is loaded. Nobody out for Joel Sharon. Looking to pick up where he left off on Sunday in game two against MSOE, in which he went three for four with two RBIs, two runs scored, a double, and he walked. And the lefty taking strike number one. Joel Sharon, second on the team with that 355 batting average at 22 for 62. That double he had on Sunday, his third of the year, he also has three triples to go along with 11 runs batted in. The 0 1 missed low and away. And the count even up at one ball, one strike. Miller 90 feet away over at third base. Dr. Val Kuiper occupying that third base coach's box. Mitch Knox over in the first base coach's box. Off speed, swing and a miss, nearly getting Sharon to swing completely around and spin around as he falls behind one ball, two strikes. Have a tough time slowing down that swing. Ordway comes set at just above the belt. And the one, two off the knee lift. Misses down low and they can't even up at two balls and two strikes. Yesterday in game one, it was Derek Funkhauser was the losing pitcher for Maranatha. Josiah Lai came in relief in that game. And stepping off the rubber here is Ordway. Wind again picking up as it's blowing from left to right. In that second game, as mentioned, again, only two more used. Jacob Bauer got the start, suffered the loss. Next offering, a swing. And a miss. First base occupied off the drop to third strike, but again, no throw down, no tagging to be made with first base occupied. Hokinson picking up that loose baseball, and Joel Scherer in a strikeout victim for the first out here in the bottom of the first. Scoreless at the Falcons, knocking to the door with the base loaded. Nick Yenter, the DH, into the right batter's box. First pitch, he's a bounce to the second. Belinsky fields, knocks it down, picks it back up, throws the first. That's going to be the only play he has. In this score from third is Daniel Miller. Two down on the ground out, but the Falcons have a one nothing lead. Had a double play written all over it, but Belinsky, unable to come up with it cleanly, knocked it down, kept it in front of him, stayed with it to his credit, got the out over at first base. Two down for Luke Shoreline. In the left batter's box for the Falcons. And he'll take a ball alone on the outside. That besides the start in that second game that, again, was credited and lost to Jacob Bauer, Cody Borland was the other that was utilized on the mound. The 1-0 missing high and away. So Nick Yenter, as mentioned, re retired by way of the 4-3 ground up, but driving in Daniel Miller for the second out and the Falcon first run. Seifert now your lead runner at third base with Bo Bergert over at second. And Shoreline lifting it up. Fan out of, well, it's going to stay in the confines of the playing field, but take one hop before the Marinath the third base dugout. That one had fitting field written over it, or at least the stands over on the third base side written all over it, but the wind knocking it down and keeping it on the field of play. It's a foul ball, though, for Luke Shoreline. Two balls and one strike. Ordway's delivery, Shoreline, a soft tap at a first, and somehow a hole in the glove of Funkhauser. That was funky, but backing him up was Bolinski, and then covering the first base bag is Garrett Ordway for out number three. It's the bizarre scene over at first base. Derek Funkhauser bent down to scoop it up, and it went literally right through that glove, right through the wickets. And backing up, though, was Bolinski, the second baseman, enough time to field. Ordway, great heads up. The right-hander coming over to cover the first base bag ends up being... A put out for out number three. 
Minimal damage done. The Falcons only score one, despite the fact they loaded the bases with nobody out. After one, they lead game one, one nothing. Back at Capco Park in Mequon with the Falcons lead Maranatha 1-0 after 1 in Game 1. Our game broadcast here this afternoon brought to you in part by Taco Bell, located in Mequon, a proud sponsor of Concordia, Wisconsin Athletics. When you're at Taco Bell, remember to live Moss. Well, the Falcons were living the high life in that first inning, but they come away with just one run. They had the bases loaded with nobody out and come away with one run on one hit. No errors, and they strand a couple on. As a first pitch strike taken by Caleb Rose, who leads things off in the right batter's box for Maranatha. Next offering from Winter, a big swing and a miss, going with the fastball that gets the Crusader right fielder to swing, and the count goes to nothing in two. Rose batting 276, third best down the team. Up there in the battle, a looper, and it's just over the head of Taylor Book, who's going back on the ball. That ball lands in between Book and Luke Shoreline, the right fielder, who has played a couple of steps back from his normal depth. And Caleb Roast able to pick up Marion Athens first, hit a leadoff single here in the second, bringing up Timothy Rogers. Part of the Marion Athens men's soccer team, baseball here in the spring. And the right-hander on the first pitch, he sends it way up into the air. Shallow center going back as the shortstop, Brock Bateman. He'll make the catch a number of feet beyond that second base bag toward the green turf in shallow center. And there's one down. And we're talking about the wind, though, during our open, off the opening pitch. You can already see the wind point effect with some of these fly balls and it's kind of knocking it down. It looks like it's got more flight once it leaves that bat, but uh-uh. First pitch, a strike taken by Andy Timlin, the Marinatha third baseman. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, that uh, that ball off the bat of Roger looked like that was destined for a deeper part of center, and all of a sudden it was Bateman going back to the ball and putting it away. Off a swing and a miss, counting out nothing and two on the Marinatha third baseman. He two in that right batter's box. It's like we're playing in uh, Wrigley Field so far today, man. The wind playing havoc last weekend with the Brewers at Wrigley Field and doing so well here so far at Capco Park. Next pitch, Ben's inside a swing and a miss by Andy Timlin. He's a strikeout victim. Second K of the game now for Winter. And it brings up Ethan Hokinson, the Maranatha right-handed catcher. So far, an all right-handed lineup. Ball taken on the outside. Yeah, Funkhauser, he's waiting on deck. He to a righty and then Jacob Bauer, he too, a righty. And all right-handed lineup against the lefty, Michael Winter. one nothing Falcons with two down here in the top of the second. Off the end of the bat, that's sent off the netting in the backstop area. Cale Prost over at first base. Would lead off this second with a single. And out to right field. Runner goes. The 1-1 one -one is taken for a ball, and... A great jump off the first base bag by Caleb Rose to able to successfully steal second. And we see it again here at Capco Park. That infield turf, something that these players aren't used to, although Maranatha played here yesterday. That slide at second base by Rose, he almost overslid the bag, kind of sat on his backside and had some discomfort up okay now. Here's the 2-1. A swing and a miss, and... I'll make that a ball and a couple of strikes. Apparently that last pitch was a strike despite the fact Chuck Rungy never put his hand up. 
He was too busy like the rest of us being a spectator as Caleb Roast took second base. So that was a 1-2 offering instead of a 2-1 offering. And Hokan sent a strikeout victim nonetheless. Back-to-back case for Michael Winter. Do note, Maranatha is now a perfect 5-5 five of five on stolen bases this season. But it goes for not with Roast stranded in scoring position. one nothing Falcons, middle of two. To the bottom of the second here at Capco Park, the sun, there's a foreign concept this week. The sun is shining, or at least trying to. It's otherwise been a mostly cloudy start to this Saturday, but dry as the Falcons and the Crusaders go at it in a doubleheader of D3 college baseball. Falcons in front, one nothing. Brock Bateman leading things off in the right batter's box, and Ordway set to go back to work. He misses up and in, forcing Bateman to take a step back. Bateman batting 250. He is 11 of 44 with a couple of runs batted in. This now his 17th ball game. The 1 0. Hit to left center, and this one is going to find the alleyway. Cut off by the center fielder Tim Shelp, who loses his hat in the process. Bateman leading off with a single. And we talk about the win factor. That one kind of hung up in the jet stream for a little while, but. Hit toward the alleyway. Long run for Jacob Bauer to make from left. Tim Shelp making his move from center, losing the camp in the process, but that ball finding some turf and Bateman picking up the team's second hit. That brings up Jay Kaczynski bunting up the third baseline, but it rolls foul. Then after Garrett Ordway, heck of an effort. He goes head over heels for the sake of, well, just tumbling. He came storming off the uh, rubber to get after that, and he just took a spill and then did a stop, drop, and roll as he now cleans off his cleat. The only part of the field here at Capco Park that is actual dirt is the pitcher's mound, and it's a little bit damp, I would say, waking up in the area with some snow on some of those surfaces. Here the count, no balls and a strike to Kaczynski following the the bunt attempt, looking to bunt his way on. And now he gets the bat over the right shoulder, takes a ball down low, ball bounced in front of Hokins, and then stealing second base is Brock Bateman. Falcons are now 14-22 in the stolen base category. Bateman in scoring position with his first steal of the year. Falcons a little more aggressive when it came to base stealing on Sunday against MSOE. The 1-1, catching the eye of Kaczynski, and the count goes to 1-2. and two. In game one, Brandon Tyford for the lone steal, the lone attempt as well against the Raiders. Falcons then a couple of stolen bases and four tries in that second game. This one hit toward left center, but now makes its way towards center. Shelp able to make the catch, waist tie, basket catch, now taken off for third base is Brock Bateman. Again, there's the jet stream, the wind factor. That ball was curving toward left center and then took a, a wide turn to the right, right back to where Tim Shelp was standing in the center fielder. And even at first, when he made that catch, it looked like at first he may have overran the ball or came in a little too soon, but able to make the adjustment. Kaczynski, a flyout victim to the outfield. And Bateman tagging up and moving to third base. So one down for Taylor Book. 
in the left batter's box for Concordia. And a ball bounces away from Holkinson in the score from third without a throw is Brock Bateman, and the Falcons have a 2 nothing lead. Ball hopped directly in front of Holkinson, bouncing into the backstop area on the first base side, and the Falcons taking the 2 nothing lead with one down here in the bottom of inning number two. Manufacturing a run there for the Falcons. Stolen base, fly ball, get him on, get him over, get him in. Scoring on a pass ball. And the 1-0 tipped in the eye of Book in the count, even up here at one ball and a strike. Coming in with a 200 average at 7 for 35 with a run batted in. Back at second base here this afternoon. Infield plays back for Maranatha. And the 1-1, look at a bunt his way on third base side. That's barehanded by Ordway, throws across. Just in the nick of time to get the speedy Taylor Book. Not a bad thought process, though, bunting third base side, especially with Andy Timlin, the third baseman, playing back. And so on a 1-3 put out, two down back to the top of the order in Daniel Miller. So Brock Bateman able to enhance the lead to two runs here in the second inning. Now Daniel Miller has scored the first after a single back in the first and eventually came around by way of a ground out by Nick Yenter. Yenter picking up his fifth run bat at the end of the year. So two outs here in the bottom of the second. Ordway shaking off the first side, now agrees and delivers a first pitch strike to Daniel Miller. Oh, i got a moment, too, on to say hello. Taylor Book's parents listening out in Oregon. I might as well chime in that uh, as well. Grandpa says hello. The old one jam shot comebacker. Ordway makes the catch, came in on Miller, and not much flight, but a short catch being made by Ordway on the comebacker for out number three. The Falcons do score one. They pick up one hit with no errors and nobody left on. After two, in game one, it's 2 nothing. Falcons in front. To the top of the third here in game one from Mequon. The Falcons on top of Maranatha by a 2-0 score. And a quick defensive change for the Falcons. We'll see Jimmy Dodens, the freshman from Germantown, replace Jay Kaczynski in center field. For the play-by-play of number three and four, here's Kevin Winter. Thank you very much, Matt. For Maranatha, 8, 9, and 1. To face the left-hander, Michael Winter. So far, so good. Two innings, one hit, no runs, three punch-outs. First one to Funkhauser. The first baseman is off the outside corner for a ball. It's one and nothing. Here's the next one. In, in there for a strike, and the left-hander is even it up at one and one. Wind picking up a little bit out there now. Swinging a fly ball, center field. Jimmy Doden says that wind... Now pushes the ball all the way to left. Luke, all the way to right, excuse me. Luke Shoreline the catch. And there is one up and one down. As again, that wind moving from left to right. Push that ball all the way from center to right field. But Shoreline able to make the play. One down. Bottom of the order now, Jake Bauer, the left fielder. Takes one in there for a strike. It is... Nothing and one. That one's off the outside corner for a ball. County up now at one and one. On Bauer. 
1-1 pitch, swinging a bouncer back up the middle. It's off the mound, picked up at short by Bateman. His throw will not be in time. That ball took one hop off of the mound. Winter got out of the way. Behind second base, Bateman made the play on the bare hand, fired across the first, not in time. And the Crusaders have a runner. Top of the order, we go now in Belinsky. Struck out his first time, swinging a bouncer back up the middle. That'll be a base hit past the glove hand of Winter back up the middle. And the Crusaders have two on. Still only one out. And that will bring to the plate the pitcher, Garrett Orway. So for the Crusaders, two on, one out. Concordia leads this one two to nothing. You're in the top of the third from Capco Park. First one, swinging a bouncer towards second, could be two. Fired a short for one, back to first in time. There's the twin killing, 4-6-3, Book Bateman, Miller. Crusaders put the two on, but with the aid of the ground ball, Winter gets out of trouble. Maranatha gets nothing in the third after two and one half from Capco Park, two nothing, Belkins. Two nothing, the Falcons on top of Maranatha. We are to the bottom of the third. This afternoon's game broadcast is brought to you in part by Tartan Supply. If you're looking for floor care equipment, cleaning chemicals, or cleaning supplies, Tartan Supply is the company for you. Whether your facility is retail, industrial, or commercial, Tartan Supply is here to support you with quality products, green cleaning tips, and specialty maintenance programs. Tartan Supply is a provider of janitorial supplies for Camp Gold Park and the official cleaning partner to Falcon Athletics. To the bottom of the third inning we go. Two, three, four for the Falcons. Brandon Seifert, Bo Bergert, and Joel Sharon. With the Falcons leading two to nothing. First one is up high to the third baseman. Seifert's got an opportunity to watch their other son play here yesterday for Marion as Maranatha hosted the Crusaders in a twin bill yesterday here at Capco Park. Next one to Seifert is in there for a strike count even now at one and one. A little bit of extra time for Ordway. Here it is. Swing and a check swing foul off to the left, off the netting in the backstop area. Seinfeld hit by a pitch his first time. Falcons loaded the bases in that first inning, only picked up one run. Here's the next offering. That one is outside the zone all the way to the center of the left-handed batter's box, but stopped behind the plate by Hokinson. Count now at two and two. Here's Ordway. Swing a bouncer back up the middle. That'll be a base hit past the stab attempt by Ordway. And Seinfurt delivers. 
And the Falcons have a runner now for the catcher, Bo Bergert. He walked his last time. Two sixty two for Berger. So far in the year. First delivery to him is down off the outside corner. And it count now at one and nothing. First time in a long time we haven't had three events going on at once here at Capco Park. Here's the one oh pitch with a runner going. Ball down low, and Seifert steals second without a throw, in fact, standing up. And the Falcons now have a runner in scoring position. Still nobody out. 2-0 in there for a strike. Today begins a stretch of barring any rainouts. The Falcons... Athletic Department will have a game going on every day for the remainder of the season. Mother Nature has been a bit unkind, but here at Capco Park, no major issues. In there for a strike to Berger, count now two and two. Got teams calling on a daily basis to try and move games here as it was yesterday with Maranatha and Marion. That one's down, stairs for a ball, count full up now to the Falcon catcher. 2 nothing our score, bottom of the third. Crusaders of Maranatha and the Falcons of Concordia. Here's the 3-2 to Berger. Check swing for a ball, ball gets away from Hokinson and moving his way to third is Seifert. So a runner 90 feet away for Joel Sharon. He struck out his last time. Sharon has got that average up near 350 after a bit of a slow start. Came back the first couple of games of the year on an absolute torrid pace. Here's the pitch with the runner going. That's downstairs for a ball. Berger up standing. So Sharon with an opportunity now to drive in a pair with Berger and Seifert at second and third. Here's the 1-0 to Sharon. Swing a bouncer to second. This will get a run in. Bobbled by Belinsky, and the throw to first will not be in time. So Belinsky... Got a sharp ground ball right to him at second base. Had trouble with it. Ball kicked away from him, able to pick it up. Fired a first, not in time for a hustling Sharon. Seifert scores. It's 3 nothing Falcons. And Bergert moves to third. Runners at the corner, still nobody out for Nick Yenter. So a error for... Maranatha, their first of the ball game, gives the Falcons the 3 0 lead. Here's the pitch with the runner going in there for a strike, throw back to the pitcher. Sharon Steele sliding in. So Sharon now moves into scoring position as Nick Yenter takes that strike. Here's the pitch from Ordway. That is a breaking ball that missed. Gets away from Hokinson. Able to corral it. No further movement by either runner. County it up now at 1-1. One and one. Enter coming in 2.43. An RBI his last time. That one came inside and got him. Enter spins away. Hit him just be low the shoulder area and the bases are now loaded as we go to Luke Shoreline who last weekend 
hit a long ball over the right field fence that initially looked like a routine fly ball, but the wind just kept carrying and carrying, and he hit it into the grass seat area out here in right field, the spot where most of the fans will sit in the grass seats for the North Woods League season. Short first pitch to Shoreline is in there for a strike in the outside corner. Nobody out there today. It is briskly cold here at Capco Park. Swing and a laser to right. That will be caught on a fly by Roast. That will get a run in. Burgard scores on the sacrifice fly. Sharon moves up to third. An absolute rope hit by Shoreline. Roast caught it head high. As he lined it down that right field line. So add another four Concordia. Two in. It's now 4 nothing. And Brock Bateman, the shortstop, will step in. Still only one down here in the inning. He was able to reach base. with a single and steal a base his last time. Here's the pitch for the runner going again. No throw. F fake throw by Hokinson. Looks Sharon back at third as he came up initially, took a look at Yenter trying to steal. But for the third consecutive batter, the Falcons have moved the runner at the corner up to second. Swinging a Come back to first, up and out of the glove of Ordway. And he took a look at third, dropped the baseball, and fired to first to make the play. So runners stay put, but an out is made. And Jimmy Dodens, the defensive replacement in center field for Kaczynski, who started this ball game, will get his first A-B of the afternoon. That one is outside for a ball. Again, Ordway fielded that liner right back to him, caught it, dropped it. Runners froze, but he was able to make the play as Yenter did not venture too far outside that batter's box. So there are two down now here in the inning. Doden steps out for a moment. Now back in there. Ordway to the set and fires. In there for a strike count even at one and one to the new center fielder. Doden's coming into the year 2-11. But played some infield and outfield this year for the Falcons. Takes one off the outside corner. Ball squirts away from Hokinson behind the plate, but he's able to corral it just outside the left-handed batter's box. Not far enough away for Sharon, who had creeped up that third base line. Here's the 2-1 to Dodens. That one's inside, backed him away, belled high. And the freshman moves ahead on the count, 3-1. and one. Taylor Book on deck. Then it's back to the top of the order in Miller. Four nothing our score here in the bottom of the third. Two in, two on for the Falcons. And the three one to Dodens is down outside the zone. That ball gets away from Hokinson. Runner will come in to score as Sharon standing up. Hokinson finally gets it back in. Dodens alertly goes to second. So Hokinson took his time trying to get that baseball as it went away to his right behind the backstop. And on ball four, Dodens took off for first base full bore. And because Hokinson took his sweet time getting that ball back in, Dodens alertly moves up another 90 feet. So the next thing you know, a run in and 
Still runners at second and third as the score now is 5 nothing Falcons as Book takes one in there for a strike. Here's the 0-1. Book takes one off the inside corner, gets away from Hokinson again, and Yencher scores. So, Hokinson having a tough time here in the inning. A couple of pass balls have allowed runners to move up and score. And the Falcons, on only three hits, have six runs in. Here's the pitch to Book off the outside corner. Count now two and one to the left-hander. Sets up on the outside corner. Here's the pitch. Book swings and skies one toward shallow center. Wind playing havoc with it, and Rogers can't make the play as he was going with his back toward the infield. He can't make the play on the basket-style catch. And Book reaches base with a run scoring. Doden scores from third. And a bloop single for Taylor Book. And the Falcons go back to the top of the order now in Miller. Here's the pitch with Book going. No th throw down to second is not in time. Book steals second. Got a great jump. And he moves himself into scoring position. Here's the 1-0, swinging a foul back to the screen by Miller. Miller making his third plate appearance already here in the third inning. Counting it up at 1-1 one and one with Book at second. And here's Ordway's delivery. Swing a fly ball, foul, and back out of play. We've got a gathering taking place at the environmental building down that right field line. Car's not in danger on that one, but something to maybe keep an eye on later this afternoon. Swing a bouncer to second. Fielded by Belinsky, he bobbles, fires across the first in time, but a productive inning for the Falcons. They pick up five runs on only two hits. Book stranded at second, but the Falcons lead it 7 nothing as we play here from Capco Park in Mequon. This afternoon's game broadcast of Falcon Baseball is brought to you in part by WCSS Basketball Camps, now entering their 13th summer here in 2013. WCSS is more than most basketball camps, as WCSS offers and accomplishes more at a lower cost per session than most basketball camps. What WCSS is most proud of is the quality of teaching that it presents yearly. Visit www.wcss-basketball.com. 
And as we're back to the play here in the top of the fourth inning, swing and a miss, Tim Shelp. Winter back to the mound, working quickly today. Something we all enjoy here in the press box. Strike two right away. <laughs> Here's the 0-2 to Shelp. Outside corner missing. Swing a bouncer back up the middle, fielded by Winter, but he can't uh, make the play. Bateman does on the hop, fires across the first in time. Winter tried to field that ball with his glove hand. Ball took a hop to Bateman at short, but he was able to make the play. 1-6-3 on the putout. And there is one up and one down for Roast, the right fielder. Caleb Roast, one for one today. Also stole a bag as one of the three hits for Maranatha this afternoon. First one to him is in there for a strike. Winter jumping ahead. Nothing and one. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Outside. Grabbed by Berger. Winter set head high. Here it is. Same location. Ball outside the zone. Count now at two and one. Swing a fly ball. Wind going to play havoc with this one. Bateman at short makes the catch. Seifert gave it a look at third, but Bateman able to make the play head high. Two up and two down. Here in the top of the fourth. And the shortstop. Timothy Rogers will be the next man up. First one to him is in there for a strike. Falcons leading this one here in the top of the fourth, seven to nothing over the Crusaders of Maranatha. Swing and a miss off speed pitch. Rogers way out in front. Winters had that pitch working all afternoon. And the next one is outside the zone as Berger had to jump out of his crouch to make that catch. Here's the one two, swing a fly ball foul, right field side and out of play. Winter to the set again. Here it is. Swing and a miss. And Bergert will complete the strikeout two to three. So the Crusaders are turned away one, two, three here in the fourth. And as we go to the bottom half, it is seven nothing Falcons. To the bottom of the fourth inning we go from Capitol Park here in Mequon. Falcons leading the Crusaders of Maranatha 7 to nothing. And Brandon Seifert, Bo Bergert, and Joel Sharon, 2-3-4.
for the Falcons. Seifert one for one plus a hit by pitch in his two at bats today. Right handed batter waits for the opening pitch. And he takes one up high and away for a ball. Next delivery from Ordway. Off the outside corner and Cypher jumping head two and nothing. So far for the Falcons, seven runs on four hits. That one's swung on, fisted foul behind home plate. And the count now two and one to Brandon Seifert. He's gotten more and more comfortable over there at third, making his first extended playing time over there. Swing a bouncer to second, fielded by Belinsky, and the 4 3 put out starts the bottom of the fourth inning for the Falcons. That will bring to the plate Bo Bergert, the catcher this afternoon, has been walked twice in this contest. And he takes the first one outside the zone for a ball. Here's the 1-0. Inside almost hit him. It did. As Berger takes one off the inside foot near the knee area. Here is Joel Sharon, the left-handed batter. He swings and bounces one through the hole on the right side for a base hit. As Funkhauser hesitated for a moment, but Sharon able to bounce it up the right field side for a base hit. And that will bring to the plate Nick Yenter again for the Falcons two on and one out as we play here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Ordway taking some extra time now to tie his cleat. But he's all set to go as Yenter steps in. First one to him. Swung on, ripped down the line to third. That'll be a base hit. Timlin froze, and Bergert will score from second base. And moving to third is Sharon. Ball squirts away for a second. Ordway backing up, picks it up on the pitcher's mound. And the Falcons add another. That was a sharp ground ball toward third. Andy Timlin froze. As that ball just skidded past him on the fair side of the third base bag, down that line. And now here's Luke Shoreline. He takes his strike in the outside corner. Here's the 0 1 pitch off the outside corner. Hokinson corrals it. So the Falcons have two on. Again, seems like a occurrence the last three or four innings. As Shoreline swings and fists one foul right field side and out of play. No game action going on this afternoon from Fitting Field. First time in a while. I know my partner sat through a long day a couple of days ago in the rain for a lacrosse contest. He still 
hasn't forgiven me for leaving that game. Swing and a foul. Count now at one and two. You smirk.
Now to the top of the fifth inning we go, and for the play-by-play, here's Matt Menzel. All right, thanks, Kevin. As we go to this fifth inning with a 10 nothing Falcon advantage, Andy Timlin leads things off for Maranatha against Michael Winter. Maranatha's played 11 games. Not a single one of those has gone beyond seven this year. And the first pitch, Timlin fidgeted a little, offers, and takes strike one. Now, granted, four of those games are slated to be seven games based on a couple of non-conference doubleheaders. Swing and a miss, count goes to nothing in two. One of those did end in six. Right now, the way things are shaping up, this one will also end in seven if the Falcons continue the lead by 10-plus. Bouncer to third, charging is Seifert, scooping, firing on the mark over to Daniel Miller to retire Timlin. One third baseman to another, and there's one down here in the top of the fifth. Well, we look at the history for the Crusaders. They come in, as mentioned, 94 consecutive conference losses. This is a team that had a 34-game losing streak that was snapped on opening day. They were able to come up with a sweep of Lincoln Christian. A swing and a tip into the glove of Bo Bergert for Ethan Hokinson, the Maranatha catcher. The 0-1 on the outside for a ball. Now, beat Lincoln Christian. That's a team that Maranatha has beaten for their last three wins, dating back to 2011. Knocked them off 3-1 to one and 6-2 to two back on the 16th of March. Count now two balls and a strike. That coming after the team was 0-31 and 31 last spring. Taken inside, but for a strike, and the count even up at 2-2. Two and two. Technically, the team did win a couple of games last year, but they went down as exhibition wins against Lincoln Christian. And he called strike three and punched out as Hokinson. Two down here in the fifth inning. Four strikeouts to make that five now for Michael Winter. And it brings up Derek Funkenhauser, the first baseman. The first pitch he sees, he sends to left center. This one's going to find the gap and roll near the warning track and going to be cut off out there by Jimmy Dodens. But there's a two-out double for Funkenhauser. Hit number four for Maranatha. Their first extra base hit. And it extends this fifth for Jacob Bauer. Falcons lead 10-0 here in game one. Mention, though, that Maranatha is double affiliated besides NCAA Division Three, their NCCAA Division Two. They've had success, and that's where most of their goals surround, trying to find ways to be a national champion at the NCCAA level. Off the swing and miss by Bauer, count nothing at one. Next offering, a grounder to short. Bateman, scooping, fires over to first. A 6-3 putout retires Bauer for out number three. For Maranatha, no runs. They pick up one hit, a double by Funkenhauser. No errors and one left on. And do note that Maranatha did bring home a Midwest Regional Championship in the NCCAA Division II back in 2010. Middle of five here, it's 10-0 Falcons. To the bottom of the fifth inning, a 10-0 lead for the Falcons over Maranatha here in game one of this baseball doubleheader. Our game broadcast here this afternoon brought to you in part by Mayfair Rent-A-Car, which prides itself on offering the best service and the best price. That's their definition of value. 
Mayfair Rent-A-Car is the official rental car supplier of Concordia Wisconsin Athletics. Well, the Falcons continuing a stretch of 18 consecutive games right here at Capco Park. And every one of those games, uh, they consider the home team, but getting the opportunity to play at their home diamond with well, a number of their opponents having to move games here because of field conditions from the lack of spring that we have had so far in Wisconsin. Taylor Book leads things off in the left batter's box, and he gets plunked by the first pitch he sees. He wears it off the number one of the back of that jersey. He has been a magnet throughout for baseballs, whether it be getting run over by players on the field, getting plunked by pitches, but Taylor Book wears it. That's the fourth hit-by-pitch of the game by Garrett Ordway. Back to the top of the order, and Daniel Miller batting for a fourth time in five innings. First pitch, he sees he sends back into the stance here in the backstop area to fall behind, nothing and one. Falcons in front, 10 nothing. They've out hit Maranatha 9 to 4. Maranatha so far with one defensive error. That makes 14 now in the three games they have played here at Capco Park. No balls and a strike. Runner goes. Ball missing low and a slide head first into the second base bag by Taylor Book after the throw curved toward the shortstop Timothy Rogers, but again toward that third base side to the left of the uh, second base bag. And so the Falcons continuing to take off and with a great deal of success in stealing with Book now in scoring position off the steal of second. The 1-1, Miller off the end of the bat. This one curving toward the alleyway. Right center, that's going to find the gap and roll all the way to the fence. Book being sent home by Coach Kuyper. He rounds third. Miller puts up and stops at second base. And Coach Kuyper is saying, hey, wait a minute. I was telling you to come to third. And Well, he looked back to see where that ball was and if it was coming in. And as he stumbled over that second base bag, he puts the brakes on and plays it safe by, by staying put at second. So a couple of times, Coach Kuyper putting and pointing at third base saying, it should have been here. Well, instead playing it safe. And Miller finds himself at second base with the RBI double. Now an 11-0 Falcon lead. The ball curved in on Brandon Seifert after it looked like it was about to plunk him. It took a wicked curve at the last moment into the glove of Hokinson and counts nothing in one. One step to the right by Hokinson. And Seifert, this again, the right center is going to one-hop and well, fly over the hand of Tim Self, the center fielder, in the score while well, he was now at third, and Brown third, and Daniel Miller comes home to score. And that's going to be an RBI single for Brandon Seifert, although, again, I think Coach Kuiper was hoping that Seifert would find his way to second base. He kind of shrugged the shoulders with his hands out in the air going, come on. No, it is, uh, again, one of those where, for Marinatha, give them some credit, too, from an outfield standpoint. They're getting that ball back into the infield quickly. And so, again, Book scoring, Miller scoring, two more runs on the scoreboard. And a ball taken down low with Bo Bergert into the right batter's box. Yeah, so an RBI double for Miller, now an RBI single for Brandon Seifert. That next offering, take it for a strike in the count, even up at one and one. Falcons host Lakeland College, although Lakeland will be the home team on the scoreboard tomorrow. Game originally scheduled for the Howard Grove, Plymouth, Sheboygan area, the tri city that is Lakeland College. As the first, the next pitch taken for a strike by Bo Berger, one of the count now to one and two. That's always the number one question: Are you in Plymouth? Are you in Sheboygan? Or are you in Howard Grove, you pass all three to get there. All within a corner distance of one another. Bouncer into the backstop area, and the count stays one and two. Speaking of Lakeland, they're actually here as well for softball today in a doubleheader that was originally scheduled for Lakeland College, but moved here. A little more by way of snowfall in that area. Stepping off the rubber is Garrett Ordway. 12 nothing. the Falcons lead it. We are in the bottom of the fifth. Run at first with nobody out. And hit by the pitch is Bo Berger. Takes the pitch inside. 
So that's the second hit by pitch in the inning. First and second now with nobody out. Bo Bergert has a perfect game going in the sense that, well, he's officially 0 for 0, but he has walked twice. He's been hit by a pitch twice. He has scored twice. So Book and Miller all coming in here in the fifth. In fact, everybody one through nine, with the exceptional one, has touched home at least once. First pitch taken for a strike by Joel Sharon. Got to get Luke Shoreline in. He's the one player on the line, in the lineup one through nine that has not touched home yet in this ball game. Swing and a miss, and the count goes to nothing at two. Nasty off-speed pitch that Ordway has has gotten a couple of players to have to find a way to slow down that bat. Nothing into the count. Off the end of the bat, a grounder to short Rogers, and he bobbles, juggles, and eats the baseball. While that ball was coming in his direction, he took his bare hand and pounded the glove, went to scoop, put on a juggling act as he went to make the exchange. The ball came out of the leather. With the bare handed back in, and all things went awry for Rogers. Bases are loaded with nobody out for the Falcons. 12 0 your score. And Yenter, he takes ball one. Yenter has driven in two in the game. He too has been hit by a pitch, and he has scored twice. Picked up an RBI double's last plate appearance. And he'll take a ball that down low. At E6 against Rogers, the second error against Maranatha in the ball game. Yenter, by the way, now with six RBIs on the year. Great opportunity here to add to it. A one hopper, nearly backhanded by Rogers, who throws the third and gets it out. Put his body in front of that ball, went to backhand as he moved to his right. Knocked it down, stayed with it. He will get the throw to Timlin to get the first out. Retiring Bo Berger, but Brandon Seifert coming in to score. It's now 13-0 Falcons. Joel Sharon over to second base. So a fielder's choice. He's going to go 6-5 to five on the putout. One down for Luke Shoreline. Looking for another three-run home run as he takes strike one. As we mentioned a couple of times, had one of those against MSOE, which turned the momentum in the Falcon direction in game one on Sunday. That being the team's third home run of the year. A ball low and away, and it's even up at one and one. So Joel Sharon at second base. Yenter over at first. One down here in the home half of the fifth. A three spot so far, and the Falcons lead 13 to nothing. Ball sent way out of play. This one headed toward the stands at Fitting Field. One hops into the bleachers. There have been some high-scoring games between these two teams. Unfortunately, for Marinatha's sake, it tends to be the Falcons that are putting up double-digit numbers and, and runs. But uh, one such case taking place just a few years back at what is what used to be Kite Field. There's a gap shot left center, or I should say a base at the left field. Looked like it was going to go to the gap, but instead in the left, brought quickly back in by Jacob Bauer, who throws it, but in the score is Joel Sharon from second base. Two second base goes Yenter, and Luke Storland has his fourth RBI of the game. RBI single to left, and the Falcons now lead 14 to nothing with a four spot in the inning. Still one down. So Yenter, your lead runner. And again, Joel Sheridan able to come in and touch home for the third time here this afternoon. Brock Bateman. Bouncer to third. And the ball fielded by Timlin, who waits and will apply the tag on the oncoming Nick Yenter for the force for out number two. Shoreline to second base. Fielder's choice that goes five unassisted. Two out for Jimmy Dodens. No, these two, though, had a game. I mean, you have to go back to 2005, and then it's still one of the most bizarre baseball games I've ever seen. It was played at what used to be Kite Field now as a parking lot out and right and beyond. As the ball lifted 
That and right, that's going to one-hop into the glove of Caleb Roast. Rounding third base, coming in and scoring for the first time this afternoon is Luke Shoreline. So every Falcon has touched home at least once in the ball game. With the exception of Jay Kaczynski, who started, but having to leave due to illness. But the Falcons, his spot nonetheless in the batting order has touched home. And the Falcons now lead 15 to nothing with a five spot here in the bottom of the fifth. Two down runners at the corner. And Taylor Buku who began this fifth inning way back win, back up for a second time here in the fifth. And a ball that bounces away from Hokinson, but holding up over at third base is Bateman. Taking second base, though, is Dodens. And now coming out is home plate umpire Chuck Rungi. I'm going to talk with Garrett Ordway, who's had some footing issues and has been trying to knock some dirt out of his cleat. But a pass ball enabling Dodens to second base. And now Dr. Kuiper making his way in from the third base coach's box. And he'll be uh, talking with Chuck Rungi as they try to fix the mound. That's been an issue at times, and again, some precipitation last night, in fact, waking up with maybe half an inch of snow or so on uh, surfaces. But uh, pitcher's mound was covered. Regardless, though. But now it's taken here until the uh, bottom of the fifth for something to be said in a 15 nothing ball game. Right now you have, again, Bateman over at third, Dodens at second with two down. But talk about 2005. We'll get to the story. Back then, they used to play three-game series in the old Lake Michigan Conference. You used to play one game, let's say it was in Mequon on Friday, then you'd go Saturday to Watertown and you'd play a doubleheader. That doubleheader would consist of seven and nine inning games. But uh, in that particular season, these two had a doubleheader that was 19-1 to and 26-16. to so The ball bouncing away here from Hokinson in the score from third base is Brock Bateman. The Falcons now lead 16 to nothing to third base goes Dodens. Still a couple of outs here in the inning. Two balls, no strikes to Taylor Book. Ordway's pitch, low and away, dropping the knees, Hokinson to his left. A number of pass balls now against Ordway, the Marinatha right-hander. But that 26-16 to 16 game, that was a game that would see, surprisingly, the Falcons at one point down 15-5. to five. And ball four to Book. He has been hit by a pitch and walked in this inning. Now back to the top of the order and Daniel Miller. 115 pitches now thrown by Ordway. There is no activity for Maranatha. If there is, it's not in the bullpen. It's taking place behind Capco Park, which some teams have needed to do because of the conditions in the bullpen. And now a pinch runner for the Falcons will see Jacob Boudreaux come out of the dugout. Note in game two last year when these teams got together, the Falcons played 27 players in that one game, 19 with at least one at bat. Do you have enough room in your scorebook for that game? Absolutely not. There's a comeback right to Ordway. He throws over to first to retire Miller for out number three, but not before the Falcons put up six on the scoreboard. They go through the batting order, plus two, and lead 16 to nothing after five.
to the top of the sixth inning, a 16 to nothing lead for the Falcons over Maranatha. And do note that Jacob Boudreaux has stayed in the game to play second base for the Falcons. And for Maranatha, they will send the top of the order against Michael Winter, beginning with Galen Belinsky, who takes ball one. Going back to that story from 2005, and again, it's, it's one of those baseball games that you had to be there to see it, and on the offer by Belinsky, kind of even up at 1-1, one and one because again, Maranatha scored 14 runs in the fourth inning alone to lead 15-5 to five over the Falcons that day. Here's the 1-1. One, one. On the outside, caught the eye for strike two. Yet, the Falcons put up one run in the fourth, yet a 13 spot in the sixth inning, seven in the seventh, that went in seven by that 26-16 to 16 score. Called strike three, and Belinsky punched out for the second time this afternoon. Six Ks now for Winter. He's got plenty of run support, and it brings up Ordway. He'd have plenty of run support in this game with a couple. Been pitching awfully well. The one hopper, Bateman knocks it down the shortstop now. Throws it over to first in plenty of time to retire the Maranatha pitcher. Two up and two down for Tim Shelp. That game on May 7, 2005, featured a combined 42 runs, a combined 36 hits, only a combined four errors. It was a hitting kind of day. Ten doubles, two triples, one home run, and 23 singles. Off the end of the bat, a fly ball to right, going back. His shoreline still going back. That one's going to reach over his head and one hop off the L in baseball in the backdrop in right field. To second base goes Tim Shelp. He gets a stand-up two-out double, and it brings up Caleb Rose, extending this top of the sixth inning. But otherwise, again, the Falcons 21-0 against Maranatha since 2000. A number of those games seeing the 10-plus run rule in effect. Roast takes strike one. And this year's Maranatha team, you know, they got a number of new faces, nine new faces on their roster. Pitching depth has been an issue. Next offering, low and away for a ball. But then also you have a couple of guys that are playing, at least based on the preseason prediction and the preview, playing out of position from what maybe was expected this year. Grounded a short, backhanded by Bateman. Long throw, one hop off the stretch. It's going to be just late after Daniel Miller made a great effort as well as he went down to try to stretch and bring it in. He did after a long throw from Bateman over at short. Just a half a second late, and Caleb Rose able to beat it out over at first. As Shelp moves to third, it's the first time Marinath has a runner 90 feet away. Runners at the corner with two down for Timothy Rogers. Throw to first, and Roast is back. Two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Game one, 16 to nothing. The Falcons lead it. And a swing and a miss. Runs the count to nothing in one. Now we've seen Belinsky play second base for Maranatha. That was one of those areas of concern coming in based on last year's graduation. Swing and a miss count goes to nothing in two. Shelp was expected to play first base when not pitching, but he's in center field today. That's another spot that was a big question mark, a revamped outfield from that of a year ago. The 0-2 is sent to shallow right, playing perfectly was Luke Shoreline a couple of steps in, even battling the win that was not getting closer toward the foul line. Shoreline puts it away for out number three. For Maranatha, no runs. They pick up a couple of hits, no errors, and leave runners at the corner. Middle of six, it's 16 to nothing. Concordia.
the bottom of the sixth inning, a 16 to nothing lead for the Falcons and a new batter for Concordia as Ordway goes back to work and throws strike one. Jordan Mathibi, he is the batter in the right batter's box in place of Brandon Seifert. Waiting on deck is Bo Bergert. The 0-1, Miss Lowen at side and flies all the way to the brick in the backstop area and bounces back toward Hokinson. Kind of up at 1-1. One one. Our game broadcast this afternoon brought to you in part by Progress Synthetic Turf, the official turf provider for Concordia, Wisconsin Athletics. The 1-1 one, one and a tamper that's fielded by Ordway. Quickly scrambling was right to make the play over to first on the 1-3 ground out. Mathibi now finds himself 1-5 for five on the year. And it brings up Bo Berger. Again, he has walked twice. He's been hit by a pitch twice. He has scored twice. Zero for zero. And nearly got punked again. That one thrown behind him. And still found the glove of Ethan Hokinson. Some flurries falling down here at Capco Park. Count one ball and no strikes. And Bo takes strike one, count even up. Falcon sent 11 to the plate in that fifth. They would see six runs score on four hits. One Maranatha error. They have two in the game. And then two left on base. Catching the eye of Bo Bergert, lower outside corner. That's been a consistent strike throughout for Chuck Rungi. And the count goes to one and two. Ordway, the wind and delivery, popped up into the infield right side, calling forward is Belinsky with both hands above the bill of the cap. He puts it away, and there are two down. And now Joel Sharon's day, at least game one, coming to a close. Taylor Devonport, the former Port Washington Pirate, step into the plate, batting 278, and this is his 11th game at 5 of 18 thus far. That's an RBI to his credit. And he'll take strike one on the offering from Ordway. So if you factor with the pinch runner and a couple of pinch hitters we've had in this game, 13 have now played for the Falcons. I'll make that 14 now here in this first game of the ball. That's between the ankles of Hokinson all the way to the Backstop, counting it up at one and one to the Falcon pitch hitter. We have two down here in the bottom of the sixth inning. 16 runs, 11 hits, no errors for the Falcons. Zero, six, and two for Maranatha. Bouncer foul first base side. And for Maranatha, they have to Score at least seven runs as of right now to keep this game moving beyond seven when they come to the plate in the top of the seventh inning. They will have their six, seven, eight hitters due up. Having a duck out of the way and taking a ball is Devonport. Count even up at two and two. There is some activity now in the Maranatha bullpen. Perhaps more so for game two. Grounder third base side, waiting back is Timlin. He'll throw across, and that one got a piece. It looked like a Devonport as he is safe over at first base. That was airmailed from third. Had a high rainbow arc to it over to first. And Devonport safe, and they will credit him with an infield single because it, based on his speed, would have beaten the throw. Had it been a laser beam and on the mark regardless. Buster Hebna is now the batter. Hebda in that left batter's box. Swing on the weed whacker to center field, and Tim Shelt puts it away. That for out number three. Ewan chasing after that first offering. Got good contact, but hit it to the center fielder, Tim Shelt. That's out number three, as for the first time in the ball game, the Falcons failed to score, yet they lead 16 to nothing after six.
This afternoon's game broadcast of Falcon Baseball is brought to you in part by Port Washington State Bank, a fifth-generation family-owned business. Their mission is to help you achieve your financial goals with a broad array of sound, proven financial management tools and personalized, friendly service. Visit a local Port Washington State Bank for all of your financial needs. And for our top of the seventh inning needs, we turn the mic back over to Kevin Winter. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you very much. The top of the seventh inning underway, the left-hander Michael Winter has been good today. Deals one off the outside corner for a ball. It's 1-0. Winter, six innings, six hits, no runs, six punch outs, only 66 pitches as he's Delivers the next one, swing and a miss from Andy Timlin, the third baseman. County Beth now one and one. Quickly back to the rubber, here it is. Swinging a foul ball, first base side. Miller makes the play shy of the warning track in front of the Falcon dugout. So the first out of the top of the seventh is a pop out to third and here's the catcher Ethan Hoganson the first delivery to him is off the outside corner for a ball here's the 1-0 in there for a strike one one pitch swung on and missed out in front was Hokinson again. Falcons leading this one 16 to nothing here in the top of the seventh inning from Capco Park. Game one between the Crusaders of Maranatha and your Falcons. And Hokinson swings and misses. Strikeout number seven for Winter. And here's Funkhauser. Derek Funkhauser, the first baseman. He takes a strike off the outside corner. Winter jumping ahead. Doesn't look like a guy who hasn't made a start since high school. Pitched well so far today. Takes one off the outside corner for a ball. There's a swing a line shot toward left. A base hit played on a hop by Gavin Port who has checked into the game in left field. So the inning continues, and here comes Jacob Bauer, the bottom of the order for the Crusaders. Bauer with one of the seven hits now in the game. Here's the first pitch to him. Check swing strike, and Winter jumps ahead. Funkhauser being allowed to take all he wants over there at first. Swain, a bouncer to second. Boudreaux across. And the inning and the game is over. So the final score in this ball game for the Falcons, 16 runs, 12 hits, no errors, 7 left for Maranatha. No runs, 7 hits, 2 errors, and 6 left for Michael Winter, seven innings, seven punch outs in the win. The loss is charged to Garrett Ordway, six innings, 12 hits, 16 runs, nine earned, four walks, and two punch outs. Game two of this doubleheader is right around the corner. For now, speaking on behalf of Matt Menzel, this is Kevin Winter reminding you that it is not who you are, but rather. Who's you are? Thank you for listening to Game 1. Game 2 coming up next here on the Concordia Sports Network. Once again, our final 16 to nothing, Falcons. 